we wanted uh, a speaker who is funny, engaging, and the content must be able to match our training objective. Then we found uh, Mr. James Leong. He has recently been featured in Singapore Business Review as one of the 10 influential professional speakers in Singapore. Let me uh, hand the stage over to the creative professional, Mr. James Leong. This is the way I spell my Chinese name. You know me as James. My, my Chinese name is spelled this way. My family name is Leong. My middle name I shortened to the letter C. My last name is simply spelled F-O-O, -O, pronounced as Fu. The other day, I gave my name card to an Australian lady. She very politely, she read out my name. She said, Leong, Si Fu. <laughs> You watch Kung Fu Panda, right? Master Sifu. <laughs> so if you like James Leung, otherwise Leung Sifu, I will also be answering you. Yeah. Yeah. Early on, you saw that I'm a Toastmaster, right? Uh, in fact, S stands for shy. I'm a very shy person. <laughs> it is true, because as an accountant, we all tend to work with numbers, agree? We let the numbers do the talking. So normally to talk, everything is in the numbers. And my, but my passion is in teaching and helping people. So I needed to find a way how I could express myself confidently and clearly. Uh, one thing I did was that I decided to join Toastmasters and practice and build up my public speaking skills. I've been Toastmaster for a long time. People ask me, James, so what were you like? What have Toastmasters done for you? What were you like before and after you joined Toastmasters? Well, I said, before I joined Toastmasters, I was shy. After I joined Toastmasters, I'm shameless. <laughs> So I learned to grow a very thick skin, uh, which is very important in day-to-day uh, uh, -day living and also to be successful in career. Uh, there's another handshake. How many of you, so today, what's the latest craze in town? Pokemon Go. How many of you play Pokemon Go? Do me shy. Okay, so there is also, uh, you play Pokemon Go, do you know that there's also a Pokemon handshake? Yeah, you know what's the Pokemon handshake? Do you, do you know how Pokemon works? When you, buy, when you have a very, cute Pokemon, what happens is that when you train, they will evolve, correct? Uh, there's one very cute Pokemon. What is that Pokemon? It's called the Caterpillar. Yes, there's one that looks like Caterpillar. And Caterpillar will evolve to become what? Butterfly. Everybody do this? Uh, it's called a Butterfly. So this is called the Pokemon Handshake. Do this. Watch, huh? you go. Caterpillar, Caterpillar, Caterpillar. Then watch here. Butterfly! Okay, let's go! <laughs> so why do people not be able to achieve their, their goals? Because there are three obstacles that we need to overcome whenever we set a goal. And if we do not overcome these three obstacles, the goal will never be achieved. Every time we set a goal, in our mind, there is a story. What is this story? It's a story we tell ourselves. And this is called a belief. The belief that I cannot do it. The moment you say you cannot do it, is there an internal or external story? Internal. Nobody says you cannot do it, but inside you tell yourself you cannot do it, correct? Maybe because of past experience, maybe because of past setbacks, but you tell yourself, since I cannot make it in the past, I'm not going to make it in the future. So that thing will prevent you from starting. Remember when I first showed you the exercise? What did you tell me? It looks too complicated, yes? So when you set a big goal, that's what happens. When you set a big goal, it's like very complicated. And hence, the mind will tell itself a story and say, I cannot do it. So what is the trick? What is the way to overcome it? To make sure that we can achieve our goal. Set big one or small one? Small one. So we need to break down our goal into small steps. Yeah? We need to break down our goals into small steps. If it's too big, it overwhelms us. When it's too small, it can underwhelm us. Got it? Then we can do more. Which is the reason why we did what we did. List down three important things, then we bring it down. Small step. What can I start doing? What can I stop doing? What can I continue doing? Got it? Bring it down to small step. Example, do you know how they train elephants in Thailand? In Singapore, when you drive a car, you park a car, yes? In Thailand, they ride on elephants. They also park elephants. Now, how do they park elephants? When a young elephant is born, they will tie the elephant leg with a chain to a small tree. Which is bigger? The tree or the elephant? The tree was bigger than the elephant. So elephant, baby elephant tried to run away but could not because the tree overwhelmed the elephant. 
Guess what happened? Many, many years later, elephant become huge elephant. The tree is still small tree, never grow. If elephant want to run away, can elephant run away? Can, but elephant gave up running away because the belief was that they cannot run away. Yes? So based on psychology, there is a term. This is called learned helplessness. You learn to be helpless. Why? Because from past experience, it didn't work. So we say, what's the point of trying? Don't even try. So if you never try, you will never even have a chance to succeed. Fair statement. Very important. So therefore, when you set a goal, always break it down. So that is a good systematic method methodology. Tell yourself, what can I start doing? Stop doing and continue doing. Don't set all the difficult things to do. If you cannot exercise 20 minutes a day, can you exercise 5 minutes a day? Can? Just take, put on sport shoe, take out sport shoe. <laughs> Mission succeeded. Wow. <laughs> very, very important because you need to get started, which is the next point. What's the next point, everybody? Start. Or at least go shopping first. Buy sport shoes. Buy sport shorts. Ah, at least you got all the gear done. What? Don't use very waste the same thing. Ah, determined. You get started. Start with a small thing. What was the start that we do? Everyone can do this, right? Start with small steps. I never ask you to do this thing as a start. Slowly, you build up the momentum. Got it? Next point. What's the next point, everybody? Sustain. When you continue doing over and over again, does it get a little bit easier? Yes or no? Yeah, the first time was challenging, I know. I, I learned this myself. I, so I, I can tell you what's the process I go through. But now I can do it literally with my eyes closed. And you can too. Because if you practice, you become sustainable. Example. Real life example. Do you all brush your teeth? <laughs> ah, okay. Raise your hands if you brush your teeth. Ah, this one force people to raise hands. Who now raise hands? Raise hands now. <laughs> yeah, everybody raise hands. Good. Tell me, how did your who did, who taught us how to brush our teeth? Our parents, correct? Mother, father. How did they teach us how to brush teeth? They show you first, right? Then they hold your hand, right? Then put it inside, right? Then teach you method, right? Uh, but then you will learn, uh, but you don't do tomorrow. What does a parent do? Tomorrow they say what? Come, let's brush teeth, correct? Then you do one time, you feel happy. But tomorrow you won't do. But your parents say what? Come, brush teeth, true? After a while, they just ask you, have you <laughs> brushed your teeth? True or not? Did they sustain the effort? They did sustain your effort, right? So according to psychology, the founder of American modern psychology, William James, he's called this daily strokes of effort. You want to achieve something? Do it daily. Small little effort, but you create a habit, a habit of success. Start small or big. Start small. Your parents didn't come to you one day when you were two years old and say, come, come, come. I am going to teach you something. Oh. It's called brushing teeth. Huh? which after you learn it, yeah, you're expected to do it for the rest of your life or no? <laughs> as long as you have teeth, you will have to do this thing or no? Do you think you will learn it? You know it. So big, what, what? Something I must commit to doing for the rest of my life. No way you will start brushing your teeth, true? But, no, but, but your parents, never, smart enough, never tell you this. Like, Come, just do this, do this. After that, you become happy. Now parents are not here to tell you, you still don't feel comfortable not brushing teeth, true or not? That's how a habit is formed. So start small and be consistent and be persistent. Is this helpful? Yes or no? Okay. So this is very important. I want you to tell your new, your new life story. How do you tell your new life story? Based on the goal that you set, based on the three steps that you have put up, what you start, stop, and continue doing, I want you to go to your buddy and tell your new life story. You must tell your new life, because what we need to do now is repackage, right? Repackage it. You have to say in the present. Today, this morning, you learn about present and mindfulness, true? You've got to say in the present. What do you mean by say in the present? Say, I am a healthy person. I eat healthily. I choose my food wisely. It's not, I will be healthy. I will exercise. No. I am. I do right now because what it means here is that when you say everything in the present it brings your awareness to the moment because the moment is where you make the choices in your life about whether to exercise whether to wake up early whether to go brush your teeth 
is the choices that you make right now that will determine how your life will turn out in the future. True? Very important to say in where? The present. Because when the cha kui tiao in front of you, <laughs> I am a healthy person. <laughs> this cha kui tiao came from you, I will be a healthy person. Eat first, tomorrow then I'm healthy. Never happen. Correct? So it is the moment by moment choices that will determine your future. My, my name is uh, Casey Lim. I'm the NUS uh, OFS uh, Office of Financial Services Senior Director. In my department, I have 140 people, of which about 45% uh, of them are executive and professional. Uh, the rest are what we will call non-executive non professional staff. Uh, we engage James uh, Leong to uh, help us in our train once a year training day. Uh, in the uh, happiness scorecard for a balanced life. As we all know that nowadays, uh, the work life uh, can be stressful to families and it is timely that we teach our young people in my department to see how they can better uh, achieve their goals to achieve a balanced life uh, through a maybe a scorecard method. And we basically uh, look into some of the provider of this uh, training and we found that uh, James has a good resume and also have good uh, uh, material that can basically guide us to a happiness scorecard and for a balanced life. Uh, we have enjoyed his session and, uh, and we found that uh, uh, the session has been most uh, interesting and it has been also fun when doing, uh, when James delivered that, uh, his training. So we are indeed very, very happy uh, that we have engaged James uh, Leong for this, uh, this training session uh, for my staff at NUS. Yeah, thank you very much.